If you guys have an inscribed angle, all right, or I'm sorry, we have an angle with a center. Now, we talked about an inscribed angle. So let's say, rather than having a central angle, let's say I have an um, end point and I have an arc. Let's say on that arc, let's call this uh, P to Q. All right? So there's arc PQ. Now let's say we have an inscribed angle, and let's go to here to here, and let's call that H. All right? And let's say we have an another inscribed angle, another inscribed angle with the same endpoints. All right? So if you have two inscribed angles with the same endpoints, would you guys agree? Now remember, let's call this um, K. Remember, the measure of angle H is going to be equal to 1 half the measure of the arc PQ. Right? right? Remember, this is 1 half of this arc. Right? You guys remember that? What about this? Would that be the measure of 1 half of that arc? Yes. You could say that the measure of angle K is equal to 1 half the measure of arc PQ. So what I notice is, well, if both of the arcs are one half, or I'm sorry, both of the measures of these angles, both of the measures of these angles are one half the arc of PQ, then I can say that they are exactly the same, the same measure. So therefore, I can say that measure of angle H is congruent to measure of angle K, meaning. I can say that those two angles are equal. And guess what? It doesn't matter where I make my inscribed angle. As long as my inscribed angle has a point on the circle and the two endpoints of the arc, all of your angles are going to be the same. OK? Does that make sense? A little bit? And so we could call that j and then say a. And that's also equal to measure of angle j. All right, before I give you your tarea for esta noche, um, what 